morning. Good morning. Good morning, Theon. How you doing? Good to see you, Bubba. God bless you. Uh, Percy, all right. God bless you. Michael, God bless you, man. Good to see you. some others on there. More. God bless y'all. Good to see you. Well, Frederick Boyd Jr. God bless you. Are you, are you related to Arthur Boyd that used to be up in Milwaukee? My friend from Milwaukee. Linda, God bless you. Well, Pastor Boyd, you might have been the pastor, uh, Junior. I don't know if you were Junior or not. I'm my, my friend, I, I hope that's you. I've been thinking about you in Mississippi. Vera, God bless you. Good morning. Get your pen and your pad ready, your paper ready. So we're going to run some scriptures today. We're going to be running scriptures, amen. We're going to be talking about the Bible. Our word is the Bible. We're going to talk about the Bible today, amen. The Bible, the word of God. That's our subject for the day. The Bible, the word of God.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless all of you. It's good to see you all on. And uh, we're gonna get started with prayer and uh, and and move into our lesson again today. So let us pray. Our God and our Father, we are grateful to you for another blessed day. We thank you that you allowed us to wake up and see another day and clothe in our right mind to understand who we are. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the angel that watched over us all night last night. And we just thank you for being our God and then allowing us to be your children. And as we come to study your word, we pray your Holy Spirit would move upon each one of us and open up our hearts and our minds to understand your word and then to be able to share your word. We pray, Father, for those that are listening today. We're praying for those that are bereaved today. We ask that your Holy Spirit comfort them as they go through their cup there. And those that are sick among us, we're praying, Father, that you would touch them and comfort them as well. Let them know that you will still never leave them nor forsake them. We ask your blessings be upon this Bible class again today as we go through. Open up our understanding so we can share with your people what you want them to have in here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Good to see everybody uh, this morning. Um, uh, let me let me just do this. Okay. All right. All right. Now I can see some more names. I didn't see all the names at first. Good morning. I will stop. Uh, uh, we we are so we we are we are going at it. Amen. All right. Uh, okay, brother Boyd. I see uh, that you're okay, Dick and McNeely. Uh, great nephew. All right. Now, listen, uh, let's look at this word of God. Let's look at the word of God, the Bible, the word of God. OK. And one of the things that they say is for young Christians to start out right, they need to understand the word of God, understand the Bible. So we're going to look at the Bible and and uh, and 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 look at something going to run from different passages of scripture to understand the Bible. Now, the first thing you got to keep in mind that the Bible is not a book of philosophy. Amen. I know uh, uh, even though there may be uh, it may be philosophical, it's not a book of philosophy. And you don't go to the Bible for a scientific treaty either. Uh, however, there is uh, uh, no discrepancies between uh, 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 these uh, facts of science and the Bible. The Bible is not a book of history, but it found uh, but it, it but if but it is found to be accurate when recording some the history. Amen. The uh, the Bible was given to man from God, revealed Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God the Son and the, and the Savior of the world. Amen. That's what it reveals it. The Bible, of Jesus. You remember Jesus said to the old man, "You look through the Word." And you think you have eternal life, but it speaks of me. So it's talking about the son of God, uh, the savior of the world. He is the center and, and the circumference of the Bible. It is Christ from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, that's the Bible is talking about Christ from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible is as high above all other books as the heavens are above the earth. There's no other book on earth that's been and uh, once they had a thing out that how many Bibles had been purchased and it was the number one bestseller in the world. The Bible itself is the number one best selling book in the world. Uh, he said, you, somebody said, you read it to be wise, believe it to be safe and practice it to be right. Amen. You know, I say, read it to be wise, believe it to be safe and practice it to be right. Amen. And so uh, the Bible claims to be the inspired word of God. That's this, this claim. So let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse uh, 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It's chapter 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And it says here that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. Okay, uh, it is it's it's, it's uh, and it is a profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, 
that the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. All right. So all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. And upon the statement of fact, evangelical Christians stand. That's what we stand on. On that, on that statement. The Bible claimed to be the inspired word of God. All right. By inspiration, we mean that the Holy Spirit exerted his supernatural influence upon the writers of the Bible. So they didn't write just to be right. The Holy Spirit came upon them and inspired them uh, to write what they write. All right. They was inspired. Not necessarily uh, the, not necessarily the writer but the Bible nowhere claimed to have been written by inspired men, but hope that it was that the Spirit came upon them. It said that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Okay, the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Christ told his disciples that he would leave uh, many things unrevealed and that the Holy Spirit would come and choose certain persons and through them reveal his perfect will unto men. You remember Christ told them that. There's many things I want to tell you now, but you're not ready. And so the Holy Spirit came and revealed them to men. And the Holy Spirit would, would be that believer's teacher. Now, see, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of mankind. All right, That's who's going to teach us, is the Holy Spirit. And not only that, but man is the instrument used by the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. Just an instrument used by the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. All right? And then uh, the results is the infallible word of God. That's how things can be so, uh, uh, I guess you could say, jailed together. And, un and, and the way it is is because it's, it's the word of God. It's, it's, it is the, it's, it's done by God himself. And so it, that's what makes it make sense because it comes from one mind. OK. All right. So. Let's look at let's look at the at the difficulty of the book in uh, uh, First Corinthians uh, chapter two verses fourteen through sixteen. First Corinthians uh, chapter two uh, verses fourteen through sixteen. First Corinthians chapter two and verses fourteen through sixteen. And, and this said that the Bible is a difficult book, okay? Because it, and it is for people who don't, you know, you got to have the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. You don't just jump into the Bible and understand it. It's something that you have to have a uh, word. Now, listen, this said, Paul said this in 2 Corinthians. He said, but the natural man receiving not the things of the Spirit of, of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So you can't understand the Bible unless you get the Holy Spirit to help you. He says, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is not is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. The, 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 the Bible is a, a difficult book because it came uh, from the in uh, the uh, the mind uh, of God, the infinite, uh, send it to the finite. In other words, we God is infinite and we are finite. So it's from the from the unlimited, all powerful God to the limited man. So we are limited in what we can understand. Therefore, you cannot understand the Bible as you would understand the writing of Plato or Socrates. You can't understand it like that. You can study the great philosophers with the, the natural mind and by the uh, diligent application, you can grasp their profound meaning. Now, you can when you listen to what other writers, because it's went from a human mind to a human mind, you can understand that. But you're not going to understand the Bible like that because the Bible is the infallible uh, word of God written from an infinite mind to a finite mind. So we can't understand the word of God like that. And it was it was designed purposely like that because uh, the parables, as you study the parables, and we were told when we were studying the parables, that the parables really was God's way of hiding from those who he didn't want to understand him 
And then he would explain it, as you notice, to his disciples. Someone would ask, well, what does that parable mean? Well, it was it, it was parables were to be revealed to the thing that God wanted his people to know, but it was also hiding things from those people who were not even thinking about God. So, it, so that's what, it, you know, the Bible is written in that way. If the Bible could be understood by natural man, then it would be a natural book. If it could be understood by natural men. Now you hear men say they don't understand. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you do that. And, and it could not be uh, the word of God if, if the natural man is just understanding the way it was. So since the Bible is from God and therefore spiritual, before you can receive his teaching, then you must be born of the spirit. You must be born of the spirit. That's that's yeah, that's what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. You got Nicodemus. I don't understand this thing. Jesus said you must be born again to understand it. See, and the, and the feel and then you got to be filled with the Spirit as well in order to understand this. Uh, that's why I, I I use this passage quite often uh, when I'm getting people to understand that you got three different type of people in the church, and that natural man don't understand the Word of God. He don't he don't understand it. Then you got the carnal man. When you go into the next chapter, chapter three, uh, the, the carnal man is there and, and then the spiritual man is there. Spiritual man understand it because the Holy Spirit helps him. The carnal man uh, don't understand it because he don't allow the Holy Spirit to take charge of his life. He's still thinking in a, in a natural form. So always approach the Bible praying that the spirit will be uh, your teacher and will guide you to a better understanding of the Holy Word. So when you, when I, I remember, uh, uh, I remember when, when I was, Lord would start dealing with me to preach. I was in, at working at Barbara Coleman. I had a little New Testament in the, in my locker and the spirit was telling me to read it. And I grabbed it and started reading it, but I couldn't understand nothing. And I stopped and I closed my eye, dropped my head. And I said, Lord, help me to understand what I'm reading. And when I opened it up again and I started reading and then I could start, it started coming to me. I started seeing what the word was saying. So this thing, you got, you got to pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you so that don't be, don't remain no difficult book for you. So you want to understand the Bible, let, you let the Holy Spirit in, let him guide you in understanding what the word of God says. Okay. All right. Then the Bible is a book of oneness. Okay. Is a book of one. Let's go to Second Peter, uh, one and twenty-one. Uh, Second Peter, one and twenty-one. Second Peter, one and twenty-one. The Bible is a book of oneness. Okay, Second Peter, uh, chapter. Uh, 1 and verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay? It didn't come from no, no man. It was it, as they spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay? So the oneness of, of unity in the Bible is a miracle. And I think that when we talked something about, about that yesterday, I mean, I'm sorry, last week, because uh, when we were dealing with the Holy Spirit, I, I, I made it known that uh, we can't understand the Trinity of God because it's, 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 it's three in one and it's hard for human mind to grasp it. And so here you, your Bible is oneness and it's just the unity of the Bible is a miracle. It, it is a library of 66 books written by over 35 different authors. And it's written in a period of approximately 1,500 years. I remember this now, over 1,500 years. Represented in the authors is a cross section of humanity. Some educated people and some uneducated people, including kings and fishermen and public officials, farmers, teachers, and physicians. Included in the subjects are religion, history, law, science, 
uh, poetry, drama, uh, biography, and uh, prophecy. Yet the various parts are all homiletically united as, as the part that makes up the human body. It just is, this is just as harmonious. These 66 books, uh, these 66 books are just as harmonious uh, as, the, as, as your human body is put together. Why? Because it was put together by the same person. Put together by the same, same person. So it's harmoniously united as the parts of our body is united. Yeah, all of that you got in there. You got different writers. Like I say, you got the educated, the uneducated. You got kings, fishermen, public officials, farmers, teachers, and physicians all doing this right. Different subject that is in here. Uh, uh, you got the re you got religion, you got history, you got law, you got science, you got poetry, you got drama, you got biography and philosophy. Yet all of it joins together. And for for uh, thirty five authors uh, with such a background to write on on many subjects over a period of approximately fifteen. A uh, hundred years is absolutely common. It's absolutely common. It is a mathematical impossibility for it to be this way. But it could not happen by man. Then how uh, uh, we how do we account for the Bible? The only accurate uh, explanation is God, uh, holy men of God speak as, the, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's how it was written. I know uh, when you look at some of the, the, the writing, uh, the four Gospels, for instance, just now think, just take those four Gospels, written by uh, Fisher. Peter was a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Peter, Peter was a Fisher. John them guys, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, have all that education, but they was able to write. Now you got a Dr. Luke in there; he writes. Matthew was a tax collector, and and Mark, John, Mark, we don't, you know, you don't know what he was a fisherman. I think all of them, was, but they look what they did. They wrote uh, uh, this 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 gospel and told the life of Jesus. They told the life of Jesus in the gospel. And each one of them, that, that some, of them some of the things, they tell the same story, but everybody got a different angle that they tell it from. And so it was, uh, the, so the only thing that we can say is that uh, the holy men of God spake as the spirit moved them. That's how it happened. They, they, they weren't just writing. That's why we got this, this, this book has stood uh, through the time. It was written by the mind of God through men of God that he touched. Amen. All right. Now, uh, let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter uh, four and, and verse number 12 and look at the Bible claims the power. OK, Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews chapter two, uh, four and verse number 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. It's that they said that the Bible claims special power. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. <laughs> now the word of God is, 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 is uh, for the word of God is, is quick and is powerful. That's what it says, it's quick and powerful. The Bible claimed divide and power as a sword. The Bible will separate man from sin. That's what separate. Now, when you start getting into the Bible, that's when you start getting away from sin. It separates man from sin or sin will separate man from the Bible. 
Now, you, how many times you've seen people that, that allow sin to separate them from the Bible? Instead of letting the Bible separate them from sin, they let the, they separate, they find themselves being separated from the Bible because of sin. Sin that sin make people ashamed to even come out. They'll go and uh, and hide because they done messed up so bad, and 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 that's what it does. So the Bible, in the Bible, we see ourselves as God sees us, and that is as sinners. That's how we come in. Good morning, Doctor Bird. That's how God sees us. God sees us as uh, what we are, and he exposes us uh, for who we are. Uh, when we come into the we come into the world, we are sinners. And we and that the Bible has to expose us so that we can change our way. Once he exposes us, then we change our way. Okay? Now, the Bible claims uh, cleansing power as water does. In Ephesians, it talks in Ephesians 5 and 26, it talks about cleaning, it cleansing power. It has cleansing power. David prayed that God would wash him from his iniquity and cleanse him from all of his sins in Psalm 51. He said, Cleanse me. Let and, and the word have to, the word is a cleansing power. The word of God can cleanse you. It would it will do that. The Bible claims a, a reproductive power as a seed. In 1 Peter uh, uh, 1 and 23, it's, it's like it has reproductive power, okay? And then we, we as children of God, uh, because we have been born into the family of God by the incorruptible seed of God, this is a new birth. That's what the new birth is. When you've been born of God into the kingdom of God, that's the new birth, all right? And that's, you remember Jesus had a conversation with Nicodemus in chapter three of John uh, about being born again of the, of the spirit, not, a, of the, uh, not of flesh, but of the spirit of God. And that's what happens to us when we, we receive, we become, we uh, have the spirit of God. We become the, uh, born again. And then also the Bible claims uh, nurturing power as food. All right, Peter, uh, uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2, you can read that. 1 Peter 2 and 2. Then the Bible is spiritual food for the soul. No Christian can remain strong in the Lord and not study the word of God. You cannot, this is what's wrong. This is the very problem that we face today with people in the world, in the, I mean, in the church, they are not studying the word of God. I, I often, I, got, I get kind of tickled when I think about Reverend Bland used to be on the radio every Sunday morning, and, and he'd always ask people, uh, uh, what's their favorite scripture? He said, now, what's your favorite scripture? And, and, and uh, get your Bible and give me your favorite scripture. And, and one lady came on and she said, uh, my favorite scripture is, uh, 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 wait, let me get my Bible. Anybody seen my Bible? Y'all know what Brother Brad got tickled. He said, he said, baby, I wouldn't have never said on, on that. I don't know where my Bible is, you know. So that, that, you know, you, if you, you got to study that thing. You can't, as old folks used to say, you can't just leave it laying on the coffee table, uh, gathering dust. If you're going to grow in the word of God, you're going to have to study that word of God. You got to get in that Bible. This is what makes people leave you alone when you know what you're talking about. You got to get into the word. I was sharing last week. I told you, I said, the Jehovah Witnesses come to my house. They don't come back anymore because I used, the Lord gave me enough understanding of the word of God that when they come into my house, I'd always get them and in, invite them in and then I'd lay the word on. Them. And when I put the word on them, then they, they run out of that. So you got to know that word. So you if you get stronger whenever you study the word of God. You got to study that word of God. I was saying last week, I said, uh, if you want to know really what's going, read the read. And and so uh, one of the members asked me, I said, what do you what do you, I said, the red writing in a in a in in a good Bible you get when you buy a good Bible they got. They got the words of Jesus in red, okay? So that's what Jesus, everything that Jesus was saying was teaching us how to be good Christians or whatever. 
So that's why I say if you, I heard a preacher say this years ago, said just tell them read the red. That's what Jesus said. You want to know what to do? Read the red. Amen. If you read the red, this is what God is saying to you through Jesus Christ. So you read the red. Amen. Just get that red and read that red. And then the Bible commands the believer to study the scriptures. All right. It tells you to study the scriptures. Okay. All right. Let's go to 2 Timothy uh, 2 and 15. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 15. I know most of y'all can quote this one, 2 Timothy, uh, and, and, and uh, 2.15. All right, 2 Timothy 2.15. Matter of fact, uh, this is our theme for our uh, one, our, our, young, our young children. If you can't quote it after us, our young children can. They can they they study this. The Bible uh, commands us to study the scriptures. So to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to study to show thyself approved unto God. That's a command that God gives. As you study the Bible, then you will discover that it does not just contain the word of God. It is the word of God. So you'll learn that it's not just the, that's the, it's the, it's not just containing the word of God. It is the word of God. You must also keep in mind that the word of God contained the words of God. <laughs> it contained the words of God as well as the words of Satan. See, a lot of people don't understand Satan, demons, angels, and men, all right? Both good and bad uh, speak in the Bible. Uh, that, that's what you got to understand. Some of the stuff in here didn't come from God. Some of it come from Satan. God is true and cannot lie. And Satan is a liar and the father of lies. So you got to understand that he... He, he, he works in here trying to, that he, 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 God exposes him in the Bible. Uh, when we were studying Revelation, that was, uh, I think, we saw Satan so much uh, deceiving people and doing things with people in there. And uh, I hate to say it, but this president looked so much like that beast that came up out of the waters with the seven heads. I mean, the stuff that the way he was able to get people to follow him, the way that beast was able to get people to follow him, came up out of that water. And 74 million people, you've got 74 million people that voted and followed this man. And then you got people that that he he said, let's go down here to the Capitol and we gotta we gotta act. We can't we because uh, we can't be weak. We gotta go down here and, and do. And they said they came because he summons them. You think about that kind of power. That's what Satan, that's, that's kind of satanic power. And Satan is, Satan speaks in the Bible. And he could, he, he, he said, they don't ever think that everything, I tell people all the time, I said, everything in the Bible is true. But not everything in the Bible is truth. Now, everything in the Bible is true because it's written there to let us know. So it's true. That's because it's in the word of God. But it's not everything in there is not truth. Some of the stuff in there, Satan and Satan. They told Eve, he said, uh, you won't die if you eat that. That's, that, that, that was a lie he told her and deceived her. So everything in the Bible is true, but it's not truth. And so Satan has some words in there too. So, so, so uh, we got to remember that. Now, man is natural and is therefore limited and does not always speak the truth. Man is limited. And to illustrate that, you can look at Matthew uh, uh, 22 and get 15 through 46. Amen. Matthew 22, 15 through 46. 
In this portion of scripture, we have the word of Jesus, of the Pharisees and of the Herodians and of the uh, Sadducees. Now, all of them are speaking in that in that time. The Pharisees, Herodian, and the Sadducees were trying to entangle Jesus uh, in his teaching in that passage. And that made that they that the natural man that that now excuse me, that they may uh, accuse him of breaking God's law. So now you got a dialogue here between Jesus and all these people, and they're trying to trap Jesus. So everybody is speaking, but they are not always speaking the truth. Okay, the natural man. And they're trying to trap Jesus. Their words were spoken with evil intent, revealing the thinking of the natural man, along with the words of God that came from the lips of Jesus. So in that passage, you see all of them speaking, and, and, and some of it is not true. All right, so this, this is why you got to watch it when you're reading that Bible. But the Bible is the word of God. That's why you got to study it. Know it for yourself. And as you study the Bible, ask yourself these questions. Ask yourself, who is speaking? When you're reading, you need to know who's speaking. See, that's what a lot of people don't. A lot of people, I, 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 read, I read a chapter every morning. I said, I don't necessarily read a chapter every morning because uh, you read into, maybe you read, when you read a whole chapter, you go into you might go into six or seven different subjects in one chapter and different people may be talking. So you need to know when you who is speaking. Is it God? Is it the demons? Is it angel? Is it man? When you're reading, who is saying this? Uh, remember, uh, Philip met that uh, eunuch and the eunuch was sitting on the back of the chariot reading. And Philip walked up to him and asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I except some man guide me? He said, who is this man talking about? Himself or somebody else? He was trying to figure out who, who was Isaiah talking about in that passage of scripture. And so you need to know when, you're, when you are reading the Bible, who doing the speaking? Is this God speaking? Is it the demon speaking? Is it an angel? Is it a man speaking? So you need to know that. That, that helps you to understand the Bible when you do that. And then you need to know to whom he is speaking, okay? To the nation of Israel, does that go to the nation of Israel? To the uh, Gentiles, to the church, to men in general, or to some individual man or being? Good one for that. Now, I'll show you, you got to know who they're talking to. Because everything in the Bible is not written to everybody, okay? Blessed and highly favored. Y'all know that's one of my favorite things. Blessed and highly favored. That is not speaking to everybody. That was speaking. The angel spoke that to Mary. So you are blessed and highly favored among women. Because she had been chosen as the one person in the world that was going to carry the seed of God that was going to birth into this world his son. So you got to know who is speaking and who they speaking to. That's why I tell people sometimes a lot of the stuff that's written in the Old Testament, God was speaking directly to Israel. It was not for everybody. That's what you got to understand this. It's not, everything is not for everybody in the Bible. You need to know to whom he is speaking whenever the word goes. Who's doing the speaking and then who are they speaking to? Because it's not all, for, not for everybody. Okay? Then, how can the scriptures be applied to my own life to make me a better Christian? And that's, that's, that's the next thing. How how can I get out of this passage of scripture what I need for my life? See, the, when God, sometimes God will send you to read a word in the Bible, and that word is for you because he wanted to, he wanted to speak to you. There's nothing new under the sun. God, the Bible, 
Everything that you go encounter in life is already in the Bible. Everything that God wants you to do and know is already in the Bible. The problem is we have to make certain that what I'm reading applies to me. That's something that just, that if you got to know who's speaking, know who they're speaking to, and, and understand what the Bible is saying. Is it speaking to me? How can this scripture be applied to my own life to make me a better Christian? So when you're reading, that's what you need to do. I remember I, 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 I preached the Joseph story. And man, I could I walked that, I, I knew that story. I talked about Joseph all the way through. And when I finished, uh, I was at, at Liberty Baptist Church. And Reverend William T. Henderson was the pastor. And Reverend Henderson said to me, boy, said, you got a good mind. He said, uh, you you do that Joseph story from top, from front to back. He said, but what did it mean to the people? He said, when you're preaching, you got to let the people know what that, that scripture means to them, what they can get out of. And and he rolled me about a year with that. I mean, every time we met with the other preachers, he said, that boy got a good mind. I heard you, Reverend, don't say it no more. <laughs> but he, he told me. It got to apply to the people. So what when you read in the word, what is God saying to me out of this? That's what I asked my I, I I studied this. What I'm teaching you all now, I studied it before. And I learned that I always ask myself, Lord, what are you saying to me in this? I want to know what is this word saying to me? What do you want me to get? I'm not I'm not sitting there like some folks do in church. Uh, well, I wish so-and-so was here so they could have heard this. They needed this. No, no. If you were there, God got, maybe God got something in it for you to hear. Maybe it's something that you need to do or something that you need to not do. But God may be speaking to you through. But so you need to find out what it is that God got uh, for you to do. And so uh, when you, when you, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the Bible. That's the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. So the Bible, we talked about uh, the Bible claims to be the inspired word of God. Okay. And that was in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And then the Bible is a difficult book. And that was uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. And see, I, what I love about that, too, when that's at first Corinthians, you go into chapter three, then it starts talking about the spiritual man can discern that. Then you got the carnal man, but the natural man does not understand the things of God. Okay. So you got the, uh, that's, that's difficult to understand unless you've been born again. That's what it's saying. Then the third, the, well, that the Bible is a book of oneness. Oneness. Second Peter, uh, Chapter 1 and verse 21. It is a book of oneness. Okay. Come from one mind. All right. Uh, God is, a, is, is that. It, it's just, it's got that one mind. That God, all the men was inspired by God to write what they wrote. They didn't just start writing. They was inspired, holy men, inspired by God to write the book and write it the way God wrote. And then we talked about the Bible claims special power. All right, that's that the power of, that's Hebrews chapter four and verse twelve, and all of the different things that the, the, the word of God can do, the power that it has. And then the Bible commands the believer to study the scriptures. Second Timothy uh, two fifteen, if, if, and, and uh, study to show thyself approved unto God and work with need. Uh, not be ashamed, but rightly divide in the word of truth. And that's what that's so we have to get we get that old thing and and, uh, and and meditate on that. Keep keep reading those scriptures and and, uh, and keep just just get the word of God in you and the word of God will help you uh, to be better. Amen. Amen. I, I, I won't do two today because I got a funeral at 12. So I want you all to pray for uh Deacon Williams and Sister Margin and their stepfather passed away. Pray for that family. 
as we go to uh, uh, eulogize their stepfather here. And uh, we're going to pray for you as we close in prayer. And I thank God for all of you. And, and uh, we'll see you this evening. We have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday school lesson this evening. Uh, the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And so uh, jump on that this evening at 6 o'clock. And we, we, we thank God that we, we worked on something. I hope that'll help you out. So uh, come and come with us this evening at 6 o'clock. And we are, we're going to do the Sunday school lesson on uh, the bread of life. Amen. So let us close in prayer. And I thank God for all of you being on. Amen. Our God and our Father, we're grateful to you for your word. Thank you that you did write the Bible. You use men that you inspired uh, to sit down and write, even though uh, people said they were ignorant and unlearned men. And uh, you were, but you were able to use them to write the Bible because it didn't come from their mind, but it came from you. And that the Holy Spirit moved up on them and, and caused them to write down this and leave it for us a record so that we can understand you and know you in a personal way. Thank you. And then you help us to, the Bible helps us to grow in you because it helps us to understand you, that you have the power, that you are a mighty God, and that we can trust and lean and depend upon you. And Father, we thank you for leaving us that word, that message, and helping us to grow in the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Now we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to illuminate our minds to your word so we can get a better understanding and be able to, to do the things that we need to do in order to help other people get to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Bless us now and keep us. We're praying for Vera. We ask you to bless her. And, and uh, you know what she's standing in need of, and I know you're a God that supplies all need. And we're asking that you would do that, Father, in that name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Get into that word, study that word, and then let that word get in you, and then let that word uh, keep you and teach you. Amen. God bless you. Love y'all, and, and, uh, and we will see you this evening at six o'clock.